no, pleasure it's to not meet so you. Bad. So um, I see something sliding into view here on the camera, and so why don't we bring this forward? So what am I looking at here? This is actually a uh, 3D printed uh, prosthetic device. And uh, actually the, the cover that goes uh, around it um, to protect it, obviously, against weather and whatever, but also, obviously, aesthetically. So we are giving here, for the first time in history, kind of uh, amputees, in this case, a chance to personalize their prosthetic devices. Oh, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that's great. So, um, so how long have you um, been working in, I guess, the application of 3D, um, 3D printing for healthcare? For two years now, we okay. have been doing this, and uh, I have a background in this industry over the last 20 years. Uh, we have created uh, functional prosthetic devices, sure. orthotic devices, got people to run in the Olympic Games, as That's we amazing. know, and so on and so on. But we never really paid attention to aesthetic and look, in a way, which I'm kind of ashamed of. And uh, with uh, this uh, venture we have here, unique, we are... Uh, pushing that envelope, not only for amputees, but also for, for instance, uh, people who have scoliosis, uh, scoliosis braces, and so on. Okay, so what's the real opportunity that you see? I mean, broadly speaking, so I mean, you're, you've been working with, with 3D technology now for a couple of years, yeah. and you're moving more towards personalization. So what, what opportunity do you see for the application of, um, of digital manufacturing moving forward? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a huge opportunity because, you know, there are many things that we have done very well in the last years. Uh, we, like I say, you know, we had a, in this case, bionic revolution. Uh, there is actually even this weekend, there is a bionic competition taking place in Switzerland where they are competing with these devices. And this is all be beautiful and nice, but uh, something that we have not paid attention to is uh, the, the fact that, you know, in the end, we are all different. Mm -hmm. And uh, especially if you're disabled, you're sometimes very different. So it's really hard to come up with off-the-shelf products that fit those needs. And uh, that's where 3D printing is a, is a beautiful tool that allows you certainly to accommodate to those needs uh, products like in scoliosis braces. They have to be customized. They cannot be made off-the-shelf. And here we are talking about 9 million people in the U.S. that's suffering from this. It's huge population, right? And we just haven't been able to come up with good products for them until now. We can't so talk to me a little bit about some of the challenges that you've encountered in terms of bringing 3D printing to the market. You know, I mean, it's like the technology is obviously dropping in cost, but what yep. are some of the challenges that you have in terms of operationalizing um, a 3D printing business in healthcare? Yeah, it's. Uh, I tell you, it's. Uh, it's <laughs> really. Uh, you you have to take it step by step. Okay. Because. As it is with exponential technologies, uh, they are applicable in some places. Yes. At this point in time, they are kind of ready for certain places, but for some others, absolutely not. That's why, for instance, it was fantastic to start with the covers, because this is a relatively easy product to start with. Sure. It's completely underdeveloped in clinics around the world. These are usually replacing foams. So you try to go into places where you have underdeveloped products and apply 3D printing there, but it's also reimbursement. Right. And But however, you don't want to go in with these type of products into areas like, for instance, if you think about knee replacements and bracing that's done after that, you don't want to go in there because that's a relatively well-established market where customization doesn't quite add enough value okay. to make it really a viable product at this point in time. Because you can imagine this is customized, so it takes a little bit while until you get it delivered. And uh, because it's customized, right. and uh, it's hard to compete with off-the-shelf products that are delivered in 24 hours, for instance, or need to be delivered right away in hospitals after a trauma or something like that. Right. So, as far as the next application that you see moving forward, what exponential technology? We're talking about 3D printing, but there's been a lot of talk about AI and blockchain yeah. and yeah. all of these other, you know, genomics and all of these other very sexy topics. So what do you think is next? What's the next big exponential technology to really disrupt healthcare? I mean, the reason why I love coming here is because you see a lot of exponential technologies. In my view, there is no really one that you can really pick out that uh, will disrupt. I think it's always about combining these together. Okay, so That's how innovations happen. 
And for instance, uh, just for instance, what we are doing, we are not only bringing 3D printing and personalization to this, mm -hmm. in our case, we are also bringing IoT. Uh, for instance, if you have a scoliosis, of course, everybody care about that you wear the brace up to 20 hours. So now it's, we are working with Intel together on bringing IoT into braces. Mm -hmm. It's never been done before. And uh, in addition to that, you will have AI, of course, following that. Right. And so you are kind of staggering this up. And, uh, and then you combine this with all the therapeutic uh, tools that are out there in rehabilitation centers to achieve your uh, rehabilitation goals. Right. So you, you have to work with on, all of them. With all of them. I mean, it's, you have to be picky, but because you want to, you know, you have to get somewhere as a startup company. Right. But uh, that, that's the magic, I think, connecting the dots. Excellent. <laughs> well, we look forward to that, and I know that we are about to go back to the main stage live stream. Oh, we're not, I'm sorry. So um, we're not about to do that. We are going to actually talk to Daniel Kraft. Oh. So he is standing by right here. All right. So, Ether, thank you so much for joining us. It was okay. such a pleasure thank you. to thank meet you. Thank you very much. Okay. And here we have the man of the moment. We have right, Mr. Man. Daniel Kraft you. stepping on board here. <laughs> Hello, sir. Hello. Good to see you. This is not our same sunset background um, as last night, so I'm a little bit disappointed it's about that. It's more unique. It's more unique. Well, it's lovely. No, unique. So. We just had unique 3D printed parts here. So. Yes. No, they were um, incredible. It's amazing to see how they're applying that technology to personalize healthcare. Um, so tell me about the day. How did today go? Day two. I so day two. I guess already half over. Um, well, we, yesterday was intro exponentials, but today we wanted to take a deeper dive into where things with omics. We're going from omics to action. Larry Smarr shared a lot of amazing information about where the microbiome is today, using okay. his background as an astrophysicist to apply that same kind of thinking and technologies to connect the dots from the microbiome. We heard from George Post uh, out of Arizona doing some amazing work now using uh, uh, DNA and synthetic biology to make new antiviral therapies for global health. Uh, in our next section, we've got digital health with John Nasta and Dr. Dave Albert from AliveCore and Stanley Shaw from Mass General. How are we using digital health from you know, connected EKG devices to how do we connect that to our, our, our clinicians and make sense of that information? So that was an interesting way to sort of connect the dots in that realm. Um, after that, we took a break here in the amazing Innovation Lab, yes. uh, <laughs> let people uh, experience some of these things in real life. Um, and then what do we do after that? We moved on um, uh, to looking at a bit uh, this afternoon at the future of therapeutics. Uh, or sorry, uh, of robotics and surgery. So okay. Catherine Moore from Intuitive Surgical share what's the cutting edge, what's the next generation of surgical robotics doing. Uh, we heard from Tippy, Sade, Tippy McKenzie, who's uh -huh. a UCSF pediatric surgeon, how we're doing precision medicine in, in, utero. in utero, which is pretty amazing. We talked to her too, we were so excited about that. Looked at this disruption of radiology, companies like Arteris, and pathology from 3Scan, how we're gonna replace the old slides with now digital slides and how that is gonna change clinical practice. And even how we're gonna change clinical trials with uh, Michelle Long, uh, Longmire, who's got an app from Medible that can enable you to design your own clinical trial, put it on the cloud, and let oh, folks wow. start using it. That's incredible. So, um, big takeaway from today. If you had to sum it up in a couple of points. I think a bit of the takeaway is that a lot of the future is already here. It's just not evenly distributed. We've been we got, hearing the same yeah. thing. Yep. Uh, we're starting to connect the dots between some of the machine learning, big data, robots, sensors, the consumer. So this information is not just overwhelming; it becomes actionable. Uh, and we're moving to an era where some of this can start to is starting to enter the clinic today. It's just, needs to have the right incentives. We need to uh, unleash and unblock some of the misaligned incentives. And that might be very different in the, if you're here in California at a Kaiser or the VA or a Geisinger or with our friends from the National Health Service or from Asia or from Africa. Lots of potential to shift and improve healthcare from prevention, diagnostics, therapy, and beyond. Excellent. So we've been hearing a lot of people dropping. Daniel Kraft keeps talking about super convergence. So um, we're on the lookout for that. So you've obviously made a big impression there. So um, what's on tap for tonight? What's on tap for th tomorrow? Our, our next session coming is going to be special. It's looking at the future of cancer. I'm an oncologist. There's so much more we can do, uh, not just from new immunotherapies, but other ways of doing clinical trials, new ways of finding early, early cancer screening and prevention. We're going to hear from a patient. Um, Janet uh, Salad is a friend of mine. Um, and we'll look at our Cancer X Prize that our team just uh, did very well with, which be a new XPRIZE in early cancer diagnostics and screening. And then to our keynote, Sangeeta Bhatia from yeah. IT, at, uh, uh, who's doing some amazing work in nanomedicine, nanotechnology, and diagnostics and beyond, and close off with uh, Singularity University's David Roberts. How do we kind of take all these exponentials and really change the world? It sounds like an action-packed night here. And we're, we're still got a ways I to mean, go. Yeah, we really do still have a ways to go. So, um, it's got nothing, skip the debates. This is much more exciting. <laughs> I, I agree, you can, yeah. Um, so talk to me about tomorrow a little bit. So what do we have on tap for tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow we're gonna look at a bit of the future 
of uh, global health. Okay. Uh, looking at how we're uh, starting to apply and democratize some of these technologies. We're going to talk about mental health and the future of the brain from the cutting edge of neuroscience. Now we're using mobile apps to help folks with psychiatric diseases. And uh, we're going to have uh, Tony Bosses, an amazing psychologist, using mushrooms, magic mushrooms, psychocillin, wow. to take folks who are in hospice care through trips to change their whole experience, change end of life care, a uh, whole other perspective wow. uh, on that realm. Um, and so that's a bit of what's on tap for tomorrow. That's awesome, Daniel. Thank you so much. This is, I heard, the fifth year of Exponential Medicine. This is our seventh program, but our fourth program here at Exponential ah, Medicine okay. Hotel Dell. Uh, it's amazing what's happened and changed, um, and how many folks have come here as participants and a faculty have mixed it up and helped change the world. So we have to catalyze new thinking and that super convergence to reshape healthcare. <laughs> Thank you so much. Join us next year. Exponential <laughs> Medicine will be November 3rd through 5th, right back here at the Hotel Dell. November 3rd through 5th, right here at the Hotel Dell. And in the meanwhile, while you, while you are enjoying our live stream of Exponential Medicine 2016, be sure to keep tweeting. We're checking our tweets right now. Yes. <laughs> be sure to keep at tweeting. At Exponential Med and hashtag, hashtag XMed. X yes, and you can also tag at underscore Guidewell, and we'll be happy to retweet you as well. Daniel Kraft, thank you so much for joining us here again. We always appreciate your update. I know you have to run. Thanks to you so and Guidewell. Thank you so much. See you on the live stream. All right, see you on the live Bye. stream. Thanks again to Dr. Daniel Kraft. Um, one last thing I just want to mention to everybody who's watching the live stream, what, what we've been doing while the live stream has been on break is we've been interviewing some of the biggest and brightest thinkers here in healthcare who've been attending this conference. And we've been getting main stage speakers right off the stage after they've finished presenting. So we've got a lot of great interviews for you that are lined up, ready to go for you to binge watch after the debate. Um, and they are up there on YouTube. So all you need to do to find them is go to YouTube, and search Guidewell. And you'll be our access to our whole playlist and you can see all of the great interviews we've conducted today as well as the interviews we conducted yesterday. So I know Dr. Kraft mentioned Tippi McKenzie. We spoke to her. We talked to, spoke to Dr. Um, Mark Hyman, who you just saw live. Um, we've spoken to a number of different innovators all day long. There's just, uh, there's, there's too much to even keep track of. So um, you can check those all out on YouTube. We appreciate all the help that you've been giving us out on social media. And I know that we've got a lot of global watch parties. We've been getting input from Australia, from Spain, from Africa. And we really appreciate all of the support that you're giving us watching this conference and definitely participating in the conversation um, with us on Twitter. I know that um, we'll be going live here in just a moment. Um, so we can't wait for um, the action that's up there on the main stage. Um, thank you guys for watching the live stream, and um, we'll be back here in the Guidewell Innovation Insights Lounge at Exponential Medicine soon. Thanks so much.